For more than 3 billion people around the world, rice is a daily food, a simple, dependable staple. But today's consumer may be getting more than he expected. This bag of rice is as much a product of science as it is of nature. It contains a genetically modified strain that is illegal in most of the world, including in the Philippines. And yet we found it readily available in a Manila supermarket just a few weeks ago. It has now apparently been withdrawn. I'm Taymor Nabili, and on this edition of 101 East, we ask, does the world need genetically modified rice, and is it already too late to stop it? By 2025, it's estimated there will be another 650 million rice consumers on the planet. But will there be enough rice? The supply of land and water is constantly shrinking. No wonder then that so much attention is being paid to the science of rice. Chan Tao Cho reports. The dawn of a new era in rice production cannot come quickly enough. It's a staple food for China and India, two of the most populous countries in the world. Any shortage in these countries will have an impact on the rice supply for the world market. You just have to be prepared to, to be able to solve the problem in a timely way. And if so, it so happens that the problem can only be solved using genetic modification, you'll have to apply it. And again, go through the process to make sure whatever is released at the end of the day is safe. Here, in the fields of the International Rice Research Institute, new rice varieties with different characteristics are constantly being developed. One of the main aims is to help farmers achieve greater yields, because with only about 7% of the world's rice produced being exported, the race is on to increase supply available, especially for developing countries that import rice as a staple food. The Research Institute, also known as IRI, is based in Los Banos, a two-hour drive from Manila. It experiments with conventional breeding methods as well as genetic engineering. In recent years, Erie has also been working on a type of genetically modified rice called golden rice. It was developed by Swiss and German scientists to combat vitamin A deficiency, which can cause blindness. Conventional cross-breeding methods with other rice types are used to achieve a stable variety safe for the dinner table. But it's controversial because golden rice includes genes from daffodil and a type of bacteria from corn. It is not yet ready for field trials. Still, environmental group Greenpeace is concerned not just about golden rice, but also other pest-resistant crops. You, you have a plant producing a toxin during its whole lifespan. That alone is actually a main concern in terms of um, protecting soil quality. Worms and other organisms find, found in the soil and are important to keep the soil healthy. The debate over the health effects of genetically modified crops on people is another issue. GM crops have been on the market for over 10 years. There's been not a single ver verifiable incidence of any health con issue. If you look at 10 years of GE crops, what's that? That's like a very short span of time for humans as opposed to doing it on laboratory animals like rats where intergenerational um, changes can be observed in, in the span of a year or so. Currently, it is up to individual countries to decide on how strict they are about genetically modified food products. Until a few weeks ago, this brand of rice was freely available on the shelves of supermarkets in the Philippines. Yet it failed European Union safety standards for containing a genetically engineered strain. It has since been withdrawn. While Erie did not verify the test results, its stand on genetically modified food was straightforward. And whether it's genetically modified or conventionally bred will not matter if the food and the product itself passes all the safety requirements and the standards. Developing countries in Asia have pressing concerns on adequate supply of food. The issue now boils down to how strictly authorities can implement safety standards and not allow anything harmful to slip through the cracks. 
We're joined in the studio by Daniel Ocampo from Greenpeace in the Philippines, and you saw him in the film there, and by Duncan McIntosh, the spokesman for the International Rice Research Institute. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Let's kick off with the basic premise of the film that we saw there, which is uh, the idea that there is a need for more rice in the world. Is that actually the case, Duncan? Yes, from our point of view, absolutely. In fact, that's really the main story here from Erie's point of view. Rice prices are at a 10-year high. World rice stocks are at a 30-year low. Daniel, is there not enough rice being produced every year to feed everybody? Um, the premise of producing GM crops that are supposed to um, be the solution to hunger is a, is a fallacy. Uh, we think that world hunger is not caused by the unavailability of food, but the capacity of people to purchase food and access to food. So is there enough rice actually on the market at the moment to feed people, even if it's not getting to the right people? I think so. It's just that it's um, being traded as a com commodity instead of, a, of being a primal uh, need for people. Duncan, the, the production of rice itself is, is uh, about... 80% of it comes from small-scale farms, comes from uh, local developing country farmers. Uh, the economics is surely much more of an issue here in, in making sure that the production that is done is done profitably, is done um, more efficiently than trying to somehow en introduce science uh, and genetic modification to the problem. It's true, but let me just say quickly, uh, we certainly don't dispute that GM will solve the world's food shortages. Let me just agree on that point. In no way. We just say this is an, an, another useful technology amongst many other tools. It will not solve the fundamental oh, problems cool. of hunger uh, and or poverty for that, for that matter. Right. But on the question of the economics, again, it's, it's, it's very hard to look at rice in a rational economic situation because every country, every government in Asia subsidizes its production, subsidizes its price. It's very hard to make assumptions about rice as you would with any other commodity. It's very dangerous. Why? Because it, it's subsidized, it's considered a strategic commodity so, by most so, governments in so, Asia. So, so are many things. I don't see why that constitutes well, a problem. Well, I'd invite you to, to name some of the other. Oil may be considered a strategic commodity. But I, I think you just have to look at what happens in countries such as Japan and Korea, which have developed economically to such a point where they don't need their rice industry. They could buy all the rice they needed for uh, forever and yet they go out of their way to protect their rice industries. And I think that's, that shows you the importance of it. But, but I would first disagree with what you said about GM as a useful technology, because if you look at all the risks attached uh, with genetic modification, they actually counterbalance the need for technologies that can solve world hunger. Hold on, hold on. Before we get into the risks attached to mm -hmm. genetic modification, let's just look at the idea of genet genetic modification as science. Now, do you not think that the scientific knowledge that we are building up uh, with regards to species and growing of crops is actually a useful commodity, is a useful set of information that should be explored? Uh, why, why, what have you got against science in agriculture? Um, we are not against science per se in agriculture, we're just against genetic modification of organisms. Why? There's an, uh, another facet of biotechnology which has been proven safe. Why, why are you against genetic modification? Uh, for one is the inherent risks that it has in terms of um, altering the gene sequences of an organism. You actually introduce novel genes that can cause the replication, mutation in the animals and the organisms. And this poses inherent risk, risk to humans and the environment. Let's take a practical real-world example, and that's the golden rice that your organization is working on. Uh, and this will illustrate what I mean by diversity. If you eventually, as you plan to, put golden rice with its enhanced vitamin A potential uh, and its po theoretically enhanced potential for health benefits in the Philippines onto the market, we're not, we're not allowing the... nature now to start building its own rice varietals. We're relying on you to provide ever better, ever more augmented pieces of, uh, of food uh, and therefore cutting nature out of the equation altogether. It's, it's like saying by introducing uh, low-fat milk because it's a better or healthier milk alternative, it wipes out the rest of the milk industry. Golden rice is aimed at those people who are too poor who can afford fresh fruit and vegetables or anything else. It's, 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 and I don't mean that that's their only alternative. It's just another alternative that societies may like to pick up to provide better nutrition. 
it's not going to go into affluent, affluent rice markets in Hong Kong or Singapore. There is no need. There are no vitamin A deficiencies on a large scale in Singapore or Hong Kong. And as Asia becomes more affluent, there'll be less need. But it is useful as a possible alternative to support efforts to improve the nutrition of the poor. Um, let me go back again to the fact that vitamin A rice is not needed. Um, the government program in um, addressing the need for more vitamin A for children and adults who are experiencing blindness is actually almost solved. There are statistics from the um, Philippine Health Department that uh, vitamin A deficiency has already gone down by 2% in the past five years. And this means that um, vitamin A rice, um, together with its um, dangers and threats to our rice varieties, is actually not needed. Vitamin A, uh, from what I've been we reading... We would dispute the figures. Obviously, the Philippine government, they're the ones driving this process more than Erie, and they obviously feel a need for it. But vitamin A, you can get from a small mango, from half a mm, cup correct. of green vegetables, yeah, from a yes. couple of tablespoons uh, of sweet potato. Correct. I mean, building it into rice is not necessarily the simplest way to do it. You can hand out pills, vitamin pills, to kids who need them, mm -hmm. rather than going to the, the effort of trying to build it into a genetic code. Those pills cost the UN, for example, hundreds of millions of dollars every year mm -hmm. to distribute through the developing world. You put vitamin A into golden rice, it's finished, it's done. It doesn't cost you any more money. But, but, but it is a fact that uh, the beta-carotene content of golden A rice is, you know, it's not even enough to address the needs of a person's uh, on a daily basis, like you have to eat nine kilos of cooked rice every day just to meet your RDA. All which, right. Daniel which knows you that's the first generation he's talking about. Yeah. There is a second generation which greatly I improved levels of, of vitamin A in the yeah, rice. But we'll leave the golden rice yeah. argument there for okay. a minute. We're going to have to take a short break. Coming up next on 101 East, we'll continue the discussion on genetically modified food. Are GM crops the solution for Asia? And if they are used, will the re yield really increase? We'll hear from one farmer who's gone down that road.